Madam Deputy Speaker, um, Mr. Speaker today has graciously allowed the earlier urgent question and this statement both on climate change. That, in my remembrance, is absolutely unique, but I think it's also uniquely appropriate given the visit of Greta Thunberg uh, to the House earlier today. And so through you, Madam Deputy Speaker, I would like to pass my thanks to Mr Speaker for doing that. In our earlier discussion, we focused almost exclusively upon emissions reduction and energy policy. So I'd like to start by asking the Minister to enlighten the House about those other aspects of our climate change policy that received less attention. Let's start with the National Adaptation Plan. The Minister will know that of the 56 climate risks and opportunities identified by the Committee on Climate Change, 27 of them simply do not feature in the Government's plan. Why no word on the transition for flood-affected areas ahead of the withdrawal of flood re? Why nothing in relation to the dangers to elderly health from an overheating in the summer? Even where targets are set, there is a record of failure. The woodland cover target calls for 5,000 hectares of new plantation every year. So why is the rate so far only 1,500 hectares, less than a third? Has the Minister examined the work of Professor Ian Bateman about the differential natural capital values of such plantation depending on its location in relation to urban areas? And what account is she taking of this? Over the last two years, increasingly frequent severe weather events have cost our economy £1.5 billion a year. In 2016, the Government acknowledged the increased risk of flooding and coastal erosion. The Government accepted the current levels of adaptation were inadequate. It promised to update its flooding and coastal erosion management strategy by 2019. 2019 is here. Where is the updated strategy? We naturally focus on the impacts of human communities, but the impact on our biodiversity is devastating. It's only through a coherent and comprehensive network of protected areas that our biodiversity will not suffer further loss. So what does the government's climate strategy do to restore the 50% cuts since 2010 to the income of natural England who are responsible for monitoring and maintaining that very network? The Minister said in her response to the urgent question this afternoon that she doesn't see the value of simply declaring a climate emergency. It is this. It tells the truth. And on emissions reduction, the truth is that we are making some progress. I acknowledge that. I welcome that. But the full, the honest truth, is that we're not making progress fast enough. The government's own statistics show that. The fourth carbon budget is set at a limit of 1,950 uh, megatons of CO2 equivalent a year. A, 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 limit of, sorry, a limit of that. But current policies are off track, projecting an overshoot of 5.6%. Now, to counteract that overshoot, we'll have to reduce emissions even further during the fifth carbon budget period. Because of that overshoot, we'll need to reduce emissions by 334 megatons. Current policies leave us only half of the way between where we expected to be at the end of the fourth carbon budget and where we need to be by the end of the fifth. The Government has rightly now asked the Committee on Climate Change for its advice on reaching net zero emissions, and I welcome the Minister's assurance earlier today that she will bring the Government's response back to this House expeditiously. But the point I'd make very gently to the Minister is this. If you are already off track yeah. to meet your existing targets, yeah. then you need urgent action to get us anywhere close right. to meeting net zero. Yeah. Earlier, the Minister spoke of cross-party support on climate change. It already exists. The Labour Party, the Green Party, the Lib Dems, the SNP and Plaid all agreed that we need to declare a climate emergency. We would love it if the Conservatives joined us. Will she? If we are to stand any chance of winning the battle against climate change, we must work together over the decades ahead to ensure that we are cutting our greenhouse gas emissions at the scale and pace demanded by the science. 
Labour has already committed to enshrining a net zero emissions target in law, so have a number of other parties. Indeed, over 190 members of this House joined together in a remarkable display of cross-party support for climate action in signing a letter championed by the member for Middlesbrough South and East Cleveland asking the Government to adopt a net zero target. So will the Minister commit today to taking whatever action the Committee on Climate Change recommends when it publishes that report and to enshrining the new net zero target into law? And if the Minister were to fully accept the recommendations that the Committee on Climate Change put forward, I give her this commitment. We on the Labour benches will work as closely as possible with her and all colleagues across this House to ensure that we can get a net zero climate target passed into law before the summer recess. As the climate protesters have told us, time is of the essence and we cannot afford to let this important piece of legislation delay any longer than strictly necessary. The clean growth strategy that is supposed to meet those budgets is simply not fit to do so. And once we've enshrined for a net zero target, the clean growth strategy will be out of date. Will the Minister agree, therefore, that we need a new, more ambitious strategy? There is no shame in recognising that. The Honourable